this video, I'll be building a gaming PC for the very first time with zero experience to see which side of people are correct if either building your own is better or buying your pre-built is better. Because I'm currently on the pre-built side, so let's get right into this. First off, I began to research to find the best parts to keep us in a budget of under $1,000 and make sure every part was compatible. So I'm currently on PC Part Picker, and since I already have an awesome all-white PC, I decided I'm going to build an all-black version. I then spent the next hour carefully picking the best parts at a good price and finally confirmed my purchase. Okay, I just dropped $942, which barely keeps us in the budget by 58. So now we just wait for all the parts to arrive. No way it's already here. Holy crap! Amazon shipping is no joke. So now that all the parts I ordered are here, it's time to actually start building the PC. But so that I don't go into this completely clueless, I decided to spend the next couple hours watching some YouTube tutorials to avoid me absolutely losing my mind. I'm not gonna lie, after all those tutorial videos, I'm feeling a little too confident. So I learned the best thing to start with is putting your CPU into your motherboard, and I decided to go with the Ryzen 5 5600X, which is a mid-tier CPU for this budget build, and the MSI Pro B550 VC ATX AM4. Why is that name so long. Now this part is very crucial because the pins on CPUs are apparently really delicate and can bend fairly easy. So I held it carefully on the sides to avoid touching any pins and made sure to line up the corners accordingly by matching up the triangles you can see here on the CPU. I then dropped it right into the slot and secured it with this metal looking lever. That was actually so stressful for no reason, bro. All I could think of was like accidentally bending a pin or something. Now next up is putting the RAM sticks into the motherboard. And this is said to be the easiest part of building a computer. So let's see about that. I went with the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro 16GB sticks, which did cost a little more compared to other brands, but Corsair is said to be really reliable and I could not have RGB in my computer. I then checked the motherboard's manual to see which slots the RAM is actually supposed to go into, and then pushed the correct clips down and snapped the RAM into the motherboard. Alrighty, the RAM sticks are now in, and I'm not gonna lie, that did take a bit of genuine force to get it to click, and when I heard the noise, I actually thought I broke it for a second. Now the last part before putting the motherboard into the case is the SSD. I went with the Samsung 970 EVO Plus, 500 gigabytes of M.2, because in all honesty, one terabyte would have put us over the budget. So I removed the SSD cover from the motherboard and angled it in perfectly and screwed it back down to safely secure it. That was probably the easiest thing I've ever done. So now that I'm finished with working on the motherboard outside of the case, it's time to finally screw it in. Well, Chandler, what is that case even called? Oh, well, thank you for asking, Afro. This is the Black Nesso P1B from Gamdias. I picked it because I'm genuinely a huge fan of the trapezoid design, and since it's super easy to open up with the click of a button, it makes building much easier for beginners like myself. And the fact that I was able to order it from Micro Center for 40% off is perfect for this budget build. It can also hold up to 10 fans, which is freaking awesome. So I bought all 10 fans to go in this thing as well. But of course, before even mentioning fans yet, I have to screw the motherboard into the case. Another thing I really like about the Nest OP1 is how much room I have to work inside of it. And if I was crammed, I'd probably be getting a little mad because I am known to probably have the worst patience in the world. What the freak? Ah. Now to even be able to turn on a computer and use all the things you're seeing right now, you need a big old block called a power supply unit. So I got Gamdias's Helios P2850G, which can produce up to 850 watts and has a 120 millimeter hydraulic bearing fan. And now all I need to do is place it in the case and screw it in so it doesn't slide around. I'm not gonna lie though, looking at all these wires is extremely intimidating because I have no idea where anything is supposed to go. So I might have to go watch another tutorial on where to exactly connect everything. Now the case that we're going to be using is the Hey, I was watching that. I don't care, bro. I need to learn about power supply units. Why are you even building a stupid computer anyways? You already have one. Because at 100,000 subscribers, I'm giving it away to a random subscriber. Oh, well, they better make sure to subscribe. Facts. Now be quiet. I need to learn about where to put these stupid wires. Okay, so after like an hour-long YouTube study session, I'm feeling a whole lot more knowledgeable on where all 500 of these wires are actually supposed to go. So let's jump back into this build. But before I get ahead of myself, I'm going to attach the CPU cooler. I went with the Game Dash Chion M420, which contains three fan slots, and my favorite part, an LCD display screen to track your PC's temperatures. I went with this one specifically because LCD screens are just so darn cool. And this one's on the budget side compared to other AIOs with LCDs. Now the most important part when installing one of these guys is to make sure to have good thermal paste. And don't forget to peel off this plastic part because if not, your PC might start a nice little bonfire. Now it's time to get this thing mounted and screwed in, so wish me luck. Welp, the luck did not work. After connecting all the fans, I tried to put the AIO into the case and it doesn't even fit. So I went to the store again and bought a new one from Corsair. Anyways, I'm gonna get this thing put in for real this time, so wish me luck and mean it. Yeah. 
I am now all set and finally got the AIO put in and I will be completely honest with you, that may have been the hardest thing I have ever attempted to do in my life. And it definitely brought some emotions out. Mother fudger. No! Oh, you stupid piece of prick. Like, I'm not even mad anymore. I've just officially lost it. I'm going to bed. I'm not, I'm, video's over. I'm also now realizing that using this AO and not the other puts our new total cost at $1,097? You went over the budget? I didn't mean to. The other AO didn't fit. How are we gonna afford dinner now, huh? What are we gonna eat? I don't know. We can eat like bread and ice or something. You know, it's really not that bad. I do seriously apologize though about going over the budget. This AIO was just the only one left at my tiny little Best Buy, so I really had no other option. But while putting it in, I had also got all the other fans installed, which is already making this PC look amazing. And for those curious, these fans are from GameDS too. So now that all that mess is out of the way, it's officially time to snap in the part I've been waiting for all day long. And that is the GPU. I decided to go with the 3050 because when I was searching for one on PC Part Picker, it found one on Amazon for around 19% off, which put it at two. $200? Well, its original price was around $250. So I made sure to purchase it right away. And since this GPU took up two back plates, I unscrewed those to open up the slots, flipped open the clip, and carefully placed it into the motherboard to avoid a break. While I was back here unscrewing the plates, I noticed I forgot to put this plate on the back of the motherboard. So now this ugly gap is here, but I'm not going backwards, so it's here to stay. Since I would say I'm now over halfway finished with building this thing, I will admit and can confirm, it is a common misconception of saying building PCs is hard. Because I've actually had a blast so far and haven't had too much trouble besides when I was putting in the AIO. Why is this not working, bro? But I better not speak too soon because I think the hardest part is awaiting me of connecting all the wires from the power supply unit. So editor, play my theme music. Were those like glasses? Play my theme music. Nah, I'm gonna do my own thing. with me now finishing attaching all the wires where they're supposed to go, which was fairly easier than I thought it would be, it is now time to see if this PC will actually even boot. But before we do that, I wanna show that I'm still following a rule of thumb from a previous video on cable management, and that is angles, perception, it's everything. So I just shoved it all behind the case in a very ugly looking way because, well, you can't see it anyway, so what's the point of doing it? And how I also learned in my last video, it is important to check that the power supply unit switch is flipped on or else it won't turn on at all. So now for the moment of truth to see if this thing will even turn on. Here we go. Oh, it booted. It booted. Oh my gosh, it actually looks so sick. All honesty, I was expecting to have to fix something and it not boot right away. What the flip? But I guess that means I did a decent job at building this guy, surprisingly. So yes, this PC looks amazing, but I want to test the most important part of a gaming computer, and that's how well it can actually run games. So I threw a quick setup together of stuff I had just laying around, downloaded Fortnite, and got right into it. In creative, I'm getting in between 110 and 120 FPS, but in an actual game, I'm getting an average of 90, which isn't exactly wonderful. But this was all tested on DirectX 11, so now let's switch it to performance mode. So now being in performance mode, creative is at a whopping 300 to 400 FPS, which is freaking nuts. And making that switch from DirectX 11 to performance is a night and day difference. Now in regular game, it's averaging between 200 to 300 FPS, which again is much better than before and is definitely numbers you cannot complain about on a thousand dollar build. But that just about completes our quick gaming test. So rating this PC strictly off its performance, I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. But including the way this thing looks, which is beautiful, bumps this thing up to a 10 out of 10. So after finally building my first ever gaming PC, which side does it shift me towards more? Well, in all honesty, this was a crazy fun experience and a real patience tester. I've just officially lost it. So the easier way out is buying a pre-built because it avoids frustrations of your own and gets rid of the immense amount of time building a computer takes because just look at all these wires. But if you want to strictly stay on a budget, gain some knowledge, make something that looks exactly how you want it to, and feel proud of your gaming PC by saying you built it all by yourself, or maybe even while bonding with friends, go ahead and build one. It's really just a preference at the end of the day on whichever side you lean towards, because I feel both are really awesome either way, because no matter what, you end up with an awesome gaming PC. But that just about wraps this video up, and <clears throat> so you're seriously gonna give that PC a 
enjoy. Oh yeah, thanks for reminding me. In my last video, I received a ton of comments about the insane steal I found on a $200 computer and how a lot of people wanted me to give it away to them. Well, I can't make it that easy on y'all. So as stated earlier on in this video, once I hit 100,000 subscribers, I would choose a random subscriber to win a PC and this is where y'all guys come into play once again. Y'all comment down below which computer you would prefer me to give away. The white one I found off Facebook Marketplace, this awesome one I built in this video, or maybe even a brand new build with the specs of the most like comment. It's totally up to y'all, so let me know. And thank you all so much for the insane support I've been receiving lately because it seriously means the world to me. To have a fan base and being able to reply to as many comments as possible is genuinely such a joy to me. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. But anyways, make sure to comment how you guys feel I did on this PC build, considering it is my first ever time doing one. And I would also love to hear some pointer tips as well. All y'all fellas stay blessed and remember to always put God first. And until next time.